Hi, I'm Aiman. Welcome back to one of my auto repair and tour review videos. This video, we're going to be doing a first impression of this Vivo Home uh, manifold gauge set and pump kit. So this is not going to be an unboxing because it's already unboxed. Because we need to do a trial run of this before we did it on video. Because in the previous, in the past when we've done reviews, sometimes they don't work. Actually, like this review here, the compass didn't work when we did a review on it. So we just need to make sure that it works fine. But this manifold gauge set and pump is useful for working on your AC systems, you know, with the car. Um, it's useful for diagnosing problems with the AC, like maybe there's air in the system, water in the system, or your compressor's overcharged. Um, and this is just used to help you diagnose those problems. It's also used to help you find, uh, just to gauge the pressure in your AC system. So taking a look at it, oh wait, this, this set was uh, $130 on Amazon. Uh, we would have gotten it from Harbor Freight, but the pump itself was $130. And this just happened to have the best reviews, one of the best reviews, on Amazon overall. All right, so I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's talk about the kit. You can see behind me, this is what comes with the kit. So included is a vacuum pump, vacuum pump oil, a halogen leak detector, which we will use later. And we'll probably do a separate video on doing those because they're not relevant to us right now. But what we are dealing with right here, what we want to use is this right here, this manifold gauge set. And um, by the way, we're filming this in a very weird location because it's very sunny right now. And it's also very windy right now, which is why I moved the box behind me. But getting to the manifold gauge set, let's talk about the assembly. The assembly is fairly easy. This is how it comes like in the box when you first open it. You get the gauge and you get three hoses. So first off is the uh, low pressure hose which is blue, the high pressure hose, which is red, and this is for the refrigerant. And you also get valves for the high and low pressure hoses. All right, so I said assembly is very easy and it actually is very easy. You wanna locate the ends of the uh, manifold gauges and you'll notice that they have male ends. So you wanna take the, table, uh, the hoses, take the female ends and then just twist them on. Same thing with the high pressure hose. And for these connections, you wanna make sure that you're not using the side that has the sort of bend at it. I mean, I guess uh, this is for the, um, the other side for the valves. You just wanna make sure that these have the straight ones. And you wanna take the ends that are straight, uh, that are bent on the hoses and you wanna connect them to the valves. So first off, the high pressure. Just wanted to twist that on. Same thing for low pressure. Fairly easy. All right, so this is how it works. So first off, we're gonna hang this right here. Then we want to take our hoses and we want to locate the high and pressure, the high pressure and low pressure caps on our um, car. So this is where the high pressure and low pressure caps are. We're going to take our low pressure valve, twist off the cap for low pressure. And you'll notice that on the low pressure valve that has a, a quick release valve that allows you to quickly pull this up, push it down, and release. And what happens is that you can pull it to check if it's on there securely. And the reason it's called quick release is because uh, before you'd have to screw it in, but now you just push this and then it lets go easily. Very quick motion. And it goes in very easily. Same thing with the high pressure. Twist this off, make sure you don't lose the cap because we've lost it before. And push it in. Pull it to make sure it's there. And before you do this, you wanna make sure 
that on the top here, these valves are closed. And for these ones here, they can be open. Because as long as these are closed, it doesn't really matter if these are open or closed. So now what we want to do is we can actually check if we open these up. I think they're already open. Yes, they are. If we open these up, we can actually see how much pressure each of these um, low pressure and high pressure systems have. The low pressure right now has, I think that's zero. And the high pressure also has about zero. So the reason why is because on this car, the compressor is complete, completely shot. So it's not working, which means there's no pressure in the system. But if you check down a normal car, like my dad's Honda Civic, it'd probably be like 100 PSI in the high pressure system and 30 PSI in the low pressure. Actually, according to my dad, I think the high pressure is 270. All right, I take that back. My dad corrected me. So on a working car, the high pressure system would be at about 150 PSI and the low pressure would be at around 30 PSI. But when the car is not working, when it's not driving or when it's not on, the pressures are going to be about equal, about 90 PSI, 100 PSI. Okay, so my dad mouthed to me just now, it's 100 PSI. And we're going to demonstrate that on the uh, SUV behind me. But on a working car, when it's driving, it would be 150 to 30. And we're going to put a chart just so you guys can see what different levels of pressure tell you about the car and how to diagnose the problems. All right, let me just take this out. And we'll go check on the SUV. All right, so let me hook it up to this uh, Santa Fe Hyundai real quick. And you can see why I thought it was 90 at first. And the reason why is because after many times of releasing the pressure on this car, it actually went down from 100 to 90. So let me hook this up real quick. This one is a bit of a finagle one. There we go. So also, this is a good time to mention. My glasses are broken right now. And I balanced them pretty well on my face, so I think it's okay for the purpose of, of this video. But the high pressure hose is now on. We're going to put the caps here so we don't lose them. And now I'm going to attach the low pressure cap, which is down here. So this is going to be a tricky angle. Take the low pressure off. And then we're going to attach the high pressure. Use the quick release. So this wasn't tightened all the way. So it wasn't the valves that were loose, it was actually the attachment point. I guess I didn't tighten it enough. Huh. All right, so no alarm here. You saw that as soon as this happened, I was like, I was checking every attachment point to make sure it was tight. That's how I lo located this. With this car, I'm not too worried about letting the air out. It's still environmentally uh, unclean. Uh, I mean, it's not proper for the environment to let the refrigerant out. Uh, so just make sure that when you're using this manifold gauge set, you make sure all the attachment points are tight uh, or sealed correctly. Make sure that all of them are closed when you attach them, except for these ones because they don't really matter. If this is closed and if this is properly attached. But another thing you can do here, actually, while we're here, let's take a look at the pressure. You can see on the low pressure, it's about 70, 80, maybe 75 PSI. It was uh, about 90 before. And on the high pressure, it's about the same, 70, 80 uh, PSI. And uh, the reason why it's not 90 anymore is because some of that came out. But there's also a refrigerant pump that you can use. And you just want to locate the middle connection, attach the hose that is yellow. Okay, I was just checking that that was tight. But with the refrigerant pump, this is used to pump refrigerant into your system going through the low pressure hose. And all you need to do is take this valve uh, that we actually forgot to put back in the box when we were unboxing it. You want to attach it to the hose. And you can see that at this end, it also has another thread. And that's because most refrigerant cans these days have an attachment point that you can just screw in. 
And in order to pump this in, all you have to do is puncture the refrigerant using this up here, open the low pressure valve, and it should circulate into the system. <laughs> My dad wants to clarify that after you puncture it, then you loosen it in order to let the air actually escape. But moving on from the refrigerant, I'm gonna put that over there. Uh, let me just loosen this actually, just in case. What you can do is these actually have points on the side of the manifold gauge where you can take the hoses and if you want to store the manifold gauge or you and you don't want these hoses to be all all over the place you can actually store them on the side of the manifold gauge for example the low pressure pump goes onto this side and the high pressure pump goes onto this side and another thing is that after you're done using this manifold gauge, you want to make sure you release the air that's inside of it. And in order to do that, um, well actually, it's probably not going to do it now, but what you're supposed to do is open it and you'll be able to see, and you'll be able to see that the pressure goes to zero. So okay, so I thought it wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because it's kind of a closed system here, but it's released here, same thing here, and there we go. Okay. So very simple and um, very intuitive use. I mean, this is just, you know, putting a pump to a, a valve and just checking the air pressure. So pretty, um, pretty standard system, but I really like the way that this gauge works and it's pretty simple. I forgot to mention in my previous video that the rest of the refrigerant hose could actually be hooked up back here. So these hoses actually have a convenient storage place here. And so is this one. take a look at their pressure. So the low pressure is about 60 psi and the high pressure is about yeah 60 psi. So as you can see the psi is the same when the car is off and apparently here it's sitting at around 60 psi for both of them. Uh, our estimates before of 100 were um, apparently high. But maybe that's on newer cars. Let's try turning it on and see what the PSI looks like, or the pressure looks like, when the car is running. And I'll leave you guys with that. I'm Maimon, and today I showed you, or gave you a first impression of how to, of the Vivo Home manifold gauge set, and we're actually going to do a video on the pump next. But that's all for now. I'm Maimon, and I'll see you next time. Signing out.